Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders board. And coming up here on today's show, I'm going to be breaking down some Kyler Fackrell replacements because this was going to be a player that the Silver and Black were looking to depend on this upcoming season. He was a good outside linebacker. He's out of here. A good outside linebacker that this team was going to use as an edge rusher. And in certain situations, because... He was good enough to be a run stopper, but because of his past experiences in Patrick Graham's system, this was a guy that I really thought you could see a lot of good stuff out of entering the season. When the Raiders signed him, I was excited. I remember getting really, really pumped up because I can remember some of his better years in Green Bay where he had 10 and a half sacks. But on today, Friday, the Raiders announced that they have moved him to the IR designation, which means... His season is officially over. Now, I did release a video a little bit earlier on today about the breaking down of the running back that the Raiders just signed. And because I'm not at the studio, I didn't realize right away that it was like Kyler Fackrell done for the year type of notification. So once I figured that out, I was like, man, I have to make a brand new video for the nation because that's my job. So what I figured I would do for you all today is break down the top 10 free agent replacements for Fackrell. And anytime you lose one of your top edge rushers, because the way I looked at it this season, you got Max Crosby, Chandler Jones, and then it was Kyler Fackrell. Yes, the Raiders have Cleveland Furl. Yes, they have Malcolm Kuntz. And now, both of those players, it's time to put up or shut up, especially for Furl. You have already had your fifth year decline. Kuntz is entering his second year, and... He kind of got chewed out a little bit by Josh McDaniels at practice. And for anybody that has a problem with McDaniels yelling at Coons for ruining that drill, shame on you. I think you're just as soft then. Because, yes, Coons is getting after the quarterback, but that's not a defensive drill. It's more of letting Derek Carr roll out of the pocket and find a receiver. That's besides the point. What I'm going to be breaking down for y'all are my top 10 free agents that with the Raiders with over... $24 million in salary cap space. Let's freaking do something. Let's get something going. And yes, this injury sucks, but I would rather an injury happen now because you have an entire almost month, even longer than a month to prepare until your week one game. Yes, the week or August 4th game up against the Jags, the Hall of Fame game is right around the corner, which is why they signed the running back that they did because you're not going to see Jacobs, you're not going to see Kenyon Drake, you're not going to see Brandon Bolden, you're not going to see Zamir White. They're looking for extra depth. But this is a team right now, take a drink because I always say this, you're in probably the best division of all time. You got Patch Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson. You need to get after the quarterback. Point blank simple. And Fackrell losing him is a big time loss. Now before I get into these top 10 names that I want you guys to at least keep in mind. Remember the Raiders report is about interaction. The Raiders report is about providing extra content for y'all. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. Alright y'all let's get into my list. And I don't really have these guys ranked in any particular order. Yeah I have some more notable name guys at top. And then we'll work our way down to the bottom. First name coming up here is Trey Flowers. Is Trey Flowers an outside linebacker? No. Is he more of an edge rusher? Yes. And if I can line him up as a defensive end, which then would allow a player like Chandler Jones to be that outside stand-up linebacker, I like that a lot because Chandler Jones has that athletic ability. But still, Flowers is somebody who has had his best years in previous years with the New England Patriots. He's tried to play before in a Matt Patricia system. The only reason why he has struggled the past two seasons is because of injury. Do I know if Flowers is healthy or not? Nope. I really don't, and I wish I had a better answer for you. But if you're looking for a quick fix and a dude who knows what Patriots coaches look for in the past and has played his best years in previous years with Patriots coaches, I think you at least pick up the phone and give him a call. Next name coming up here is the guy that I want more than all these guys. Hashtag phrasing. And this is Jamie Collins, because Jamie Collins, to me, can still play at a high level. You look at a lot of the stuff he did last year, the year before that, he can still get it done. He is a 3-4 outside linebacker. Probably doesn't offer you as much rushing ability as what you look for in some of these other edge rushers. But an all-around can cover. He can stop the run. He can get after the quarterback. 
That's kind of what I look for. And again, you find a player who you can plug and play into a defensive scheme that fits perfectly for him, and then you can go back and look at some of these other players. Now, Jamie Collins is the player that I want the Raiders to sign. I have wanted this move for a long time. He's been a prominent name in a lot of videos that I have made here on the show. So here's what I want you guys to do. Go down to the comment section of today's video on YouTube and give me a name. Give me two names. Let me know an edge rusher or a potential Kyler Fackrell replacement that you think the Raiders should sign. All right, let's keep this show moving here. Let's go to the next name. This guy was actually just released just a few days ago, D. Ford. And D. Ford at one time was one of the better edge rushers in the National Football League. Like, let's not get that twisted. He's got a lot of connections with San Francisco, played a little bit of football with the Kansas City Chiefs. Injuries have just totally derailed his career, man. And it's sad because you never like to see a player who's talented have their career derailed, especially after they sign a big deal. But sometimes it happens. If Ford can pass a physical, I'll be entertaining the idea. But until that day comes, I don't know exactly what you're going to get. But if out, out of all these guys that I mentioned, if Ford's the healthiest, he's the best name on this list. The next thing I'm bringing up here is going to be a vet. And yes, veterans, they're old. He's an old teammate of Indomitian and Sue. JPP, Jason Pierre, Paul, Mr. Seven, seven and a half fingers. I don't care what it is. But this is another player who is predominantly an edge rusher, fits really good in a 3-4 outside scheme. And anytime you can bring somebody in who's been able to show you that he has durability and can play in multiple different facets, that's great. He's not the player that I remember a long time ago on the New York Giants. He's not even the player you saw maybe two, three years ago. But in terms of just having another body, because the Raiders need more bodies now. They do. You need another edge rusher. There's no way you can go into the season with only Max Crosby, Chandler Jones, Malcolm Kuntz, and Cleveland Furrell. If those are your four edge rushers, you're in trouble. Sorry, you're in trouble. You need to add somebody, and you have the money to be able to do it. So I hope we're not just pitter-patting around here and like, all right, we'll, we'll figure it out. I have a lot of confidence in Josh McDaniels. A lot, a lot of confidence in Dave Ziegler. I know Patrick Graham is a smart man. But if you're telling me that's the edge rushers that we're going to enter the season with in this division, that scares me a lot. The next name coming up here on my top 10 free agents that the Raiders could use to replace Kyler Fackrell is Carl Nassib. Yes, Carl Nassib signed a three-year, $25 million deal with the Raiders a few years ago in the whole John Gruden era. They released him. Wasn't a good fit. But the moment that the Raiders signed him, for those of you OG Raiders Report watchers, I said... I don't like the move. I didn't think it made sense because to me, Nassib was always a 3-4 linebacker. He was a 3-4 linebacker those days at Penn State. Watched him at Happy Valley a lot. And that's when he was best fit in that Buccaneers defense. He had six sacks in that Buccaneers defense because he was a stand-up outside linebacker. The Raiders tried to turn him into a hand-in-the-dirt edge rusher. That wasn't his game. That wasn't his M.O. And then... There was a few points last season where I watched a few games. And I was like, NASA looks pretty good. Gruden at times was just such a boomer. He's like, ah, oh, he didn't practice well. I'm not going to play him for two weeks. All right, Gru. Like, whatever. I am a believer that not that practice doesn't matter. It does, of course. But if a player's out there doing a halfway decent job, and in all accounts, I thought NASA did an okay job last season. Was he worth his contract? No. But if you could bring him in right now on a cheap deal, I'd be absolutely open to seeing where that goes. All right, y'all. Appreciate everyone who was watching. I do still have five more names to get to, but if you haven't already, please don't be afraid to hit me up on IG. Don't be afraid to hit me up on Twitter. I'm trying to keep you guys up to date on everything going on around the Raiders, even on my off days. As I mentioned on my video that I put out earlier today, the whole chat sports crew, they're doing a golfing tournament today, and I'm not doing it because I got a tattoo and, well, I don't want to, to get out in the sun and be all too crazy. So if uh, if anybody has any questions, also, please, about this video, hit me up. IG, Twitter, at MitchellRens365. All right, let's go to the next name here, and it's Pernell McVee. McVee, excuse me. Uh, good player, uh, veteran. However, I'm kind of a little bit mad because if it would have been up to me, right, if you could tell the future, and you're like, all right, Mitch, you're going to lose one of your edge rushers. You need someone. I wish the Raiders would have picked up the phone and called Melvin Ingram, Justin Houston, 
And most recently, Carlos Dunlap, who just signed to the Chiefs. And that's one of those moves now. I'm like, man, if the Raiders could have got Carlos Dunlap instead of Kansas City, that would be that would be a really, really big help. McPhee, though, is just, I would say, a lesser version of what you would have thought you'd get out of Justin Houston. He provides some edge rushing ability. If he can get out there for 200 snaps a year, cool. But he also has some ties with Baltimore. Let's go to the next name here. And this might be my favorite name on the list in terms of just remembering. It's Ben Simeo, man. I, I loved Benny. I thought he was a phenomenal player back in Oakland in 2019. Eight sacks. Then he ends up going to Seattle. And a lot of times it comes down to dollars and cents. But the way I think of how the Raiders were going to use Fackrell in terms of, let's say he's on the field 30% of the snaps, right? 30% of the snaps, he's in there in run situations when Chandler Jones isn't ready to take on the run. And then you have other situations where you're just looking to pin your ears back and get after the quarterback. That's kind of how I thought Fackrell was going to be used. For Mayoa, on those reps where either Crosby needs a breather, Jones needs a breather, or you're just looking to get him out there and let him do his thing, like the Raiders did in 2019, I'm there for it. You also go back and you listen to some stuff Crosby said. I mean, when Crosby, a few years ago, him and I, we used to talk. And yeah, he was a rookie back then. But I used to ask him all the time, like, what are the guys like in the locker room? This and that. And he was like, Ben Mayo is my guy. And I know a lot of Raiders players back then really looked up to Mayo. I mean, it was a young squad, no doubt about it. I know he'd be a great fit in the locker room. He'd be a great edge rusher. I know he's going to be able to soak everything up like a sponge. So Ben Mayo would be a name that I absolutely love. So before I give you my final two names here, why for yes and for no, should the Raiders go out and sign free agent Benson Mayo? All right, we got two more names here to hit, and then I'm going to get out of here because it sounds like the chat sports team's actually going to get together for some drinks in a little bit. And, well, maybe I will join my team after all. We got Brandon Copeland. Brandon Copeland played for Atlanta last season and another bottom-of-the-roster type of edge rush. Now, these final two guys I'm going to bring up, I don't know if they end up making the 53-man. I, I actually do not know. Which, now that I'm thinking about it, I also skipped another name. So we have one more name to get to. But Brandon Copeland, depth piece. We'll see if he could end up working out. Jeremiah Achu, he played for Chicago. And anytime I see Bears players, I always bring up Champ Kelly. I always bring up the fact that when you know certain players, you have a better tendency to pick up the phone and give those guys a call. And an injury that pops up like this, and let's just say the Raiders like, man... We don't want Crosby to play in the preseason game. We don't want Chandler Jones to play in this preseason game, Hall of Fame game on August 4th. Should we just bring somebody in that can participate in that Hall of Fame game? And sometimes the answer to that question is yes. And if you have those connections with Achu, then who knows? Maybe that's the guy that you decide to bring in. All right, one more name here because I skipped over him earlier. It's Everson Griffin. And Everson Griffin is another player that getting up there in age, probably like 33 years old at this point, Played on you know, the Minnesota Vikings. He's played with the Dallas Cowboys. He's bounced around some different schemes. But when he's shown up, he's been an okay player. And if I can have a veteran that can also teach some of these other guys, that's what I'm looking for at this point of Raiders training camp. All right, y'all. I'm getting ready to head on out of here. I'm Next time I'll be actually in the studio. We'll be on Sunday. Y'all will be getting a mailbag tomorrow. So make sure you're on the lookout for that video. If you haven't already... Hit that subscribe button. I will be live for the Raiders vs. Jaguars Hall of Fame game. I am, dude, I can't wait. Like, I love rumors, don't get me wrong. And I love talking about all these different what if scenarios because to me, it takes a real Raiders analyst to be able to know everything about the bottom roster guys. And anyone can talk about Derek Carr. You know, anyone can talk about the big name guys. But this part of the offseason, July, is when you can really tell, in my opinion, who knows about Raiders football? Who knows about the NFL and who doesn't? And I'm sorry, I don't think anybody can compete with the Raiders report. I don't care what any beat writer says. Nobody can compete with what a lot of these Raiders YouTubers are doing. And, you know, major shout out to a lot of people who've had my back over the past 24 hours. Graphic Raider, Raider Cody, y'all are some real ones out there. But just always know that 
YouTube is where you're going to get the best information at. Don't worry about some of those guys over on Twitter. So let's go through some of these names one more time. The top 10 Kyler Fackrell replacements in free agency. We got Trey Flowers, Jamie Collins, D. Ford. I think those are like your clear-cut top three to pick up a phone and call. Jason Pierre-Paul, Carl Nassib, Pernell McPhee, Everson Griffin, Ben Simeoa. That would be my next tier. And then Brandon Copeland and Jeremiah Achu would be my final tier. All right, y'all, that is the end of today's show. Remember, you can always get Raiders news and rumors by clicking this little subscribe button right here. If you want to continue watching other Raiders content, look at this little box. Go ahead, touch it. There. And then if you want even more Raiders content, I promise y'all, you will not find anybody on the internet. You won't find anybody else out there that keeps you more up to date than the Raiders report.